University of Columbus, my 34th year, Professor Emeritus at the College of Veterinary Medicine. I retired several years ago, but I like to get involved with small companies, and FUR is a small startup company, and uh, we're pretty excited because small companies have big ideas, and that really the name reflects what we're trying to do. Epic changes, and we're trying to change a very old problem. How many of you How many of you have had a dog or a cat that you take it to have it neutered? Or you know someone who's had the dog castrated? Okay. Everyone has been exposed to this in our society, right? Did you know that all male pigs, those in agriculture know this, but some of you may not know this, but all male pigs are castrated at birth. How many of you that? A lot in our society don't know that because they go out and go to the pork shop and it smells good and it tastes good, right? Yeah. And they don't think about the fact that how did that meat get to the market and make it smell good on the, on the grill? Well, the reason the pigs have to be castrated is because if they're not castrated, the meat stinks. The smell of this meat is cooking meat some people is pungent and gives off what is called boar taint. And this boar taint is a serious problem in the industry. And so they castrate for over a hundred years they've been castrating pigs at birth because it's easy to do. And uh, unfortunately though, it creates some problems. But the reason they castrate it has a scientific basis. You remove the test which are the source of the androgens, the male hormones. <clears throat> and, that, and then there is no male hormone to influence the meat flavor and taste. And that's the reason they have to do that. It also decreases the male aggression in the pigs too. This is, this is something that the public doesn't know a lot about, but the industry knows a lot about it because it's even all the, uh, the bulls are going to be castrated too. And so this is something that's ongoing in the industry. But there are some differences between the dog castrations and the pig castrations. The pigs are castrated at birth without anesthesia, with, with a non-sterile scalpel. There are no sutures. It's very quick. It's done by the workers on the farm, and there's no post-operative care. So this is, this is an ongoing problem that has been, we have tried to deal with this from a technological point of view and a science point of view, but it's never been solved. What are the issues that we're working with as a company to solve? Number one is the welfare of the pigs. There is no way about it. If you've ever seen this done, there's no way of denying that this is stressful, it's painful, and it's a trauma, but fortunately, they're young pigs and they get older in a couple of days. Well, it's still a welfare problem for the pigs, and in Europe, they've tried to ban it. We've talked to several farm managers, and they all say the same thing. This is a, a personal problem. Many of the personnel do not like to do this. There's a high turnover already in this industry, the pig industry, and it contributes to that. So that is an ongoing problem. It's amazing to me that in 2020, <coughs> in an age when technology is increasing logarithmically, science is solving many, many problems in the agricultural industry. The adoption of alternatives, and there are some alternatives out there to castration, these are actually declining. So to solve these problems, to, to be able to find out why the industry is not adopting alternatives to castration, our founder, and President Dr. J. Cole has put together a team of scientists with over 100 years of combined reproductive biology experience. Well, unfortunately, 
I probably think I've got 50%. <laughs> anyway, he's put together a good scientist with a focus on the idea of taking the basic science of endocrinology and reproduction and solving this problem of castration in the pigs. To do that, we have to look at this cartoon. Basic cartoon of reproductive axis in the pig. It starts in the uh, brain, the hypothalamus, and then that is where you have the onset of a cascade of hormones. This cascade of hormones begins in the hypothalamus. It's initiated by some neurons called the kiss peptin. I'm serious, K-I-S-S, kiss peptin neurons. And this hormone cascade then proceeds through the pituitary, which lies right under the, the hypothalamus part of the brain. And then the hormones are then sent into the bloodstream, to the testis, to control the release of the male hormones, the androgens, which then stimulate sperm. Without androgens, you have no sperm. Without androgens, with the androgens, though, you end up having more things. So, the purpose of our company is to figure out a way <coughs> to disrupt the reproductive axis at birth so that we inhibit the development of the testis. By blocking, it's fortunate the product we're developing blocks the kispeptin neurons. It turns out people are calling the kispeptin neurons the master neurons of reproduction. So if we are able to block the master neurons, then you, you prevent this cascade of development, you block in the androgen hormones being synthesized, you block spermatogenesis, and you block the or thing, the smelly meat. The innovation, we call our, the product that we're developing Epifix, it will be a single injection that is given soon after birth, so that's perfect for the pigs. It eliminates the board tank line because we'll be inhibiting the development of the gonadal uh, organ that is responsible for the androgens. We believe that this is safer for the animals, and I guarantee you, when I talk to the farmers, they <coughs> think it's going to be safer for their workers because they're not going to have to be dealing with these squealing pigs and a scalpel. It will be much easier to incorporate into the farm practice because we'll be able to incorporate this at birth because they're giving vaccinations and they're giving uh, mineral shots and iron shots at that time so they can incorporate this right then. So we think that this is a product that we'll be able to incorporate easily. <clears throat> Therefore, we also think that it could be cost effective. Now, there are options out there, and it's amazing that these options have not been uh, adopted to replace the physical castration, but the physical castration itself has problems. It is not necessarily safe for the workers, and it definitely, I don't care how you are, it's not better welfare for the animals, as we know. In Europe, where they're trying to eliminate, and they've actually had laws to try to block the use of castration in pigs, they're trying to go to don't have an early slaughter of the animals. So they would then take the animals to slaughter before the testis gets large enough to produce a large amount of the androgens that we call the abortion. Well, you can say that is not so good, but that's going to have a negative impact on the carcass yield and the yields because they're not getting the full blood of the animal. So you can actually say it's not that cheap to do it that way. There's a new company out that's trying to do this with the the most modern technology and it's molecular genetics. They're trying to knock out genes that are associated with the, the development and the function of the gonads. Now the problem with the genetic approach to this is it's not necessarily better for the animals. It's going to be complicated because these genes are going to be found in other organs than just the testes. And therefore it's also not going to be cheap at all. There is a product that's FDA approved. It's on the market and it's being used in some countries. It's called immunocontraception or immunocontraceptive. And 
by using the immunocontraception, though, you also end up with several problems because they have to give two injections to the animals. They have to give them to the animals that are older, so they're having to get into the pens with older animals. Therefore, we're pretty excited because we think that Epidora has a solution that will solve all of these problems. We, we have some wonderful rat data, of course, at the university do animals Rat data all the time, but the rat data is not what I want to show you. I want to show you what we're trying to do is take that and translate that into something that's useful on the farm. And this shows you our, our first uh, pig pilot test that are underway. On the left is the testicle size over the time from the injection at birth. You see it's inhibited to test the size. You can see in the middle the, on the intact animal, the very large ones, the epivara treated as the smaller ones. On the right, we're pretty pleased it's showing a decrease in testosterone, the androgen, the weaker androgen in the male, and it's almost equivalent to that of castration males. So we do believe that we'll have a product that can meet the needs of farms. We're growing fast, we're new, but we're excited. We have dedicated office space and lab space. We, we've raised $2 million for the project from VCs and angel investors. And our CEO, uh, Byron Goodberg, is sitting back here. If you're interested in talking to him about the future of this in the industry, please do. And Jenny Shima is our director of marketing. And she will be at the uh, booth that we will have, the table we'll have in the afternoon. So what are we going to do this next year? It's simple. Scientists just have to figure out how to take everything that's in the laboratory, translate that into practice what you would take to the field to substitute uh, for castration in pigs. However, the same process, the same reproductive access, all the science part, is interesting. It's similar, it's very similar across species. So we're pretty excited because if we can take this basic concept of the master neurons and inhibit the master neurons, we will be able to do this in almost all the other species, at least many of the species we could adapt this for in the animal kingdom. 